new poll from the New York Times and Siena Collins causing concern for the Biden campaign this morning. The president is trailing Donald Trump in five of the six key battleground states that helped him clinch the election in 2020. Biden is also losing support with two key voting demographics, black and Hispanic voters. Those new poll numbers are also raising concerns among top Democrats, including Democratic strategist and CNN senior political commentator David Axelrod. He says, in part, quote, the stakes of miscalculation here are too dramatic to ignore. If he continues to run, he will be the nominee of the Democratic Party. What he needs to decide is whether that is wise, whether it's in his best interest or the country's, end quote. David Axelrod joins us now. Uh, David, appreciate your time. You know when you're typing out these two tweets what the response is going to be. Um, and there's, I guess I would start with, what's the intent here? What do you want him to decide is in his best interest in the countries? Look, uh, only he can decide that, Phil. But, uh, and, and I don't, I'm not reacting to one particular poll, but, uh, you know, a whole body of, uh, of research and conversations with people. Uh, and my concerns, I want to make clear, I think Biden's been a great president. I think he's done things that have generational, will have generational impact and importance. I think he's, you know, been honorable in the office. Uh, you know, I, I have I have nothing but good things to say. But uh, as I've said for like a couple of years now, the issue is not uh, for him is is not uh, political. It's actuarial. And you can see that in this poll. I mean, there's just a lot of concern about the age issue. And uh, and that is something that I think he needs to uh, ponder. Just do a check and say, is this the right thing uh, to do? I believe if he does run, he will be the nominee. And I'm not encouraging people to challenge him. I think the party w should fall in behind him if he's the nominee of the Democratic Party, because at the end of the day, this is a uh, not a normal race. This is a race about democracy and the state of our democracy and the survival of our democracy. And, uh, and that's the, th the threat on the other side here. And I know how deeply the president feels about that. So he just has to ask himself, is, is, you know, is, is this the best path? Uh, I suspect that he will say yes. Um, but time is fleeting here, and this is probably the last moment uh, for him to do that check. And it's, 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 probably good if he does. You, you use a lot of ifs in that answer, and there's the if in your tweet, if he continues to run. Do you have information from reliable sources around him that that is still an if in his mind? And if not him, then who? I, to, the, to, the, to, the con to the contrary, no, yeah. I don't. But that doesn't mean that he shouldn't pause to think about it. He's got enormous uh, pressures on him right now. He's managing two global crises, and I think he's doing it, um, you know, with great, uh, with with great vigor and great passion. Uh, he's got. We've got a host of things at home, and the question is, uh, do you add a campaign to that? And what's your ability to do all those things at the same time? Well, and and how does that contribute to people's concerns? that are expressed in this poll. Polling numbers, I should point out, we, we had lousy polling numbers at this time in our campaign in 2011 when I was working for Barack Obama, and uh, we overcame those numbers uh, and we won. But the two things that are different are that Obama was 50 and not 81, and, uh, and uh, we didn't have Donald Trump on the other side. Uh, so those are two factors that have to be considered. So let me bring in CNN political commentators Alice Stewart and Jamal Simmons and CNN senior political analyst John Avalon. So, Jamal, let's start with uh, David Axelrod, sure. top Democratic strategist. His take on this has been getting, deservedly so, a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. He says there's a lot. Th this is there. No matter that it's a year out, there is reason to be concerned. He, let me put up the, this first tweet. He says, in terms of Biden, he's defied conventional wisdom before, but this will send tremors of doubt through the party, not bedwetting, but legitimate concern. Are you legitimately concerned? 
Of course, we should always be legitimately concerned a year out from election day. The, the Democrats, the way the Republicans and Democrats run elections right now are always head to head, they're always nail biters. I think you've got to be concerned. But let's just take a step back and think about this from some perspective here. First of all, Donald Trump's numbers here, 48, 49% in all the polls we just did in these states, that's exactly where he was on election day in 2020. So it's not like Donald Trump is actually going up or going down. It's Joe Biden is the one who's lost some traction yeah, with some the, Democratic voters. I look, back, I look back at the New York Times polling of registered voters in some of these states one year out from the 2020 election. Mm -hmm. It showed good signs for Joe Biden in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, in Arizona. That And then that spoke to how things landed on Election Day 2020. Well, it didn't quite because... Donald Trump did better than people thought. Uh, Joe Biden didn't perhaps do as well as people thought, but he won that election. Let's just keep in mind, 49% in Georgia, he ended up with around the same place. Lastly, uh, if you think about Nevada, which is the one place where uh, the president is losing to Donald Trump, kind of getting smoked by Donald Trump in this poll, right? There's something about it that's a little peculiar. John Ralston, is sort of the dean of Nevada yeah. politics, has said, if you take a look at these numbers, Clark County, which is two-thirds of the voters in Nevada, I've done some work out there, two-thirds of the voters in Nevada are in Clark County. It's a plus-eight Democratic county, right? Democrats win by eight points. They've got Trump up 46-40. Now, if you saw that kind of wholesale movement from Donald Trump in a place like Clark County, that would happen all over the country. It wouldn't be like a 50-49 race. It would be like a 54-48 race for Democrats. It, it, it's not it a 50-49 race, according to these polls, <laughs> so it's not, it's not as bad as you're saying, but it's actually a fairly sizable Trump lead, particularly in Nevada. But you're and also we in haven't some had of any states. advertising from the I president's campaign. That's not true. There's been a lot of pro-Joe Biden uh, advertising around the country. In fact, one of the notable things is they've been advertising on Bidenomics and other things, and it hasn't really had an impact mm -hmm. as of now. Right, but you haven't seen them going after Donald Trump in the way they're going to go after That's very This is going to be a very That's negative right. campaign over the course of the next year. All right, John Avalon, as long as we were talking about David Axelrod before, I want to read another part of, the, of this tweet from this is tweet number two. And this is on whether or not Joe Biden, the president of the United States, should run for re-election, John. And David Axelrod says only Joe Biden can make this decision. If he continues to run, he will be the nominee of the Democratic Party. What he needs to decide is whether that is wise, whether it's in his best interest or the country's. What about that, John? That's tough stuff coming from David Axelrod, who, of course, was instrumental in the picking of Joe Biden to be vice president back in the 08 campaign with Barack Obama. Um, look, I think what this poll shows, among other things, is that Joe Biden's biggest problem is something he can't do anything about, which is his age and perceptions of vigor around that. Can Democrats do a better job trying to sell his accomplishments to the American people? Yes, they clearly have not done a good job doing that to date. But there are fundamental problems for him in this poll that don't seem to be true of a generic Democratic candidate. Um, it's late. It's always later than you think. I don't think Democrats should be dismissing this. I don't think most are. But, you know, one of the things you hear the White House say is if Trump wasn't running, maybe Biden wouldn't be getting in. Um, you know, this decision does need to be made soon definitively, and there are signs that Biden is somewhat a drag on the ticket right now. Doesn't mean it can't be turned around. Democrats have a very good special election uh, record. But on issue after issue, uh, they're trailing Trump where they really shouldn't be, including on the issue of democracy, by the way, where Biden's only leading him by three points. And if you want to make that the centerpiece of this election, which I believe it should be, uh, you know, objective facts would suggest he should be blowing him out of the water on that one. Alice, back to the politics. The, well, honestly, the legal and the politics, they collide. Right. And John and Harry were just highlighting what the polling looks like if Donald Trump is convicted and sentenced. There's a 6% swing amongst voters towards Joe Biden, so they say so far in this poll. That's not good. That's not good. But what the Trump team is looking at right now is how does this impact uh, his base and the Republican in the primary election. They're just really looking at the primary right now, which I think is very short-sighted. We need to be looking at electability in the general election. And what we have seen so far is as his legal woes grow, so does his political power with the base. Because as Letitia James just said, Donald Trump, as we all know, will come out there today and say this is a witch hunt, this is judicial prosecution, this is overreach by um, political adversaries. 
and his base and viewers on conservative television and in conservative media, that is all they're going to say time after time after time. And his folks believe that and they believe he is being unjustly charged. They believe he is taking one for the team because he, if they would go after him, they will go after them. They believe that. And that really solidifies his support with the base. The problem is that's not true. And independent voters and rational Republicans realize mm -hmm. that's not true. They are going to unfold a very serious case of, of fraud in this case and people are going to take notice and say we can turn the page we have other options we have a strong republican primary field that is out there campaigning which should be our nominee moving forward and certainly to take on joe biden and look i think what david axelrod is saying about biden is is accurate there should be some red flags and concerns about his electability in uh, in the general election we heard the same thing from james carville the the, the clinton um the, the mind behind the, the Clinton campaign. He said a month ago that Democrats need to wake the F up on the risks of Joe Biden in the general election. I think we're going to potentially see some uh, names potentially come in mm -hmm. because, you know, Axelrod was clear. Obama's poll numbers were about the same at this point in his reelection, mm -hmm. but Obama was 50 and Biden is in his 80s.